Good morning world! It's Malu here at Travel Blogger. Today I'm going to take you to Mission San Jose, the third of my five Mission San Antonio series. The San Antonio Mission is a national historical site and the only UNESCO World Heritage Site in the state of Texas. It comprises of five mission sites with the following chronological order of establishment. One, Mission Conception in 1711, Mission San Antonio de Valero, famously known as the Alamo, in 1718, Mission San Jose in 1720, Mission San Juan and Mission Espada, both established in 1731. These mission sites are the Spanish uh, frontier established by the Catholic religious orders not only to convert the local indigenous people but also to introduce religion so they can learn Spanish culture and also to learn how to speak and write Spanish and Latin so they can assimilate themselves into the Spanish culture and became Mexican citizens. Because of overcrowding in Mission Concepcion, in Mission San Antonio de Valero, the Mexican government and the Catholic Church has decided to open a new mission. And thus, it is the Mission San Jose. It is known as the Queen of all missions and the largest, and the structures remains most intact as if it is frozen in time. It is established by Father Antonio Marhel de Jesus in 1721 and named after uh, Marquis Berto de Vera, the governor of the Philippines in 1719 to 17. 21. As with the other previous two missions, it is used to convert the native Texans into Christianity and introduce the, the education, teaching them to speak Spanish, write the alphabets. From that, they, this mission is also teaching the native the um, systemic form of farming, both in livestock and crops because that site is huge the park rangers provide free tour guides and also there are uh, private tour companies with uh, um, a group of tourists that they are showing around so if you see tony and i just go in and out of these tour groups but you can also explore the missions on your own. So if you haven't been to Mission San Jose, I will show you around. Enjoy and God bless. Mission San Jose it is truthfully the best of the Americas and not in the like of the others, nor in all the frontier does the king have an outpost better constructed and easier to defend. Mission San Jose and its surrounding fields called Laboris sustained a thriving community of Indians and Spaniards. Within the walls, Indians leave worship and attended classes to learn to blacksmith, to weave on European looms to cut stone and to make shoes and cotton clothes. Outside the walls, the mission Indians, the Nifelds, orchards, and livestock. A couple of summers ago, they had a group from the archaeology department in, uh, at Lubbock at Texas Tech. And outside,
are the apartments of the Native Indians here in Mission San Jose. Spanish Moorish uh, influenced and then um, so you'll see a lot of round arches a lot of heavy carving things like that this one if you look through this window here you see two different styles of architecture right through that window so you have the original Moorish arch and the Benedictines when they came in they were trying to help save this put it back to some sort of order Church was central to the mission community. Missionaries and Indians followed a strict schedule of fast, feast, work, and daily prayer, all regulated by the sounding bells. The ornate carvings and famous rose window of this church earned San Jose its status as queen of the missions. After suffering a collapsed dome and roof in 1870s, the church underwent frequent repair. Wow. Yes, it reminds me of the symbol of the God of the Moon in Guadalupe. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a great comparison. Wow. I, it reminds me of like Spanish tile work. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have tiles in that time period here, so they, maybe they designed it to make it look like Spanish tile work. So there's all kinds of symbolism you might find, like the four, maybe four cardinal points, yeah. uh, what each color represents. But um, yeah, this is something with you, you can see. It didn't look like that back then. It looked like this. It was very beautiful and magical, and you can see why it might have attracted the Native yeah, because the goddess of the moon is for the Native Americans. And you are the air I breathe. It's also famous for its rose window, which is the jewel in its crown. Making me whole. So that dome up there, the one you can't see from here, that dome has quite a story. It fell down once, and then it got hit by lightning another time. Wow. And then, and then they've just repaired it again. Uh, just a
growing crops were new. Over time, these hunter gatherers, co gatherers cultures and techniques blended with Spain's values and system to create a new identity. That's pretty special. <laughs> so, you should, so tell them about yourself. Tell them. Well, you, you are a descendant. We said I'm a sixth generation direct descendant. Pedro we said it. He's the master, the builder of the Lexington Sacos. He arrived here in 1768 and that's when it started uh, working on the church. Because they didn't have a master builder uh, for almost 16, 18 years until he showed up. Because the last one. It was he from Spain or Mexico? Oh, Spain. Spain. Mexico. Oh. 1768, Mexico wasn't even thought of until 1821 when they got their independence from Spain. So, they, you know, in some books that said that he was born in 1740 in Mexico. Right there off the bat, you can say they're lies. <laughs> <laughs> because there wasn't, Mexico wasn't, wasn't around.